What is going on, YouTube people? Northeast Ohio, aka Neo, aka Rob, here for a little newsy update video. Um, a lot of random stuff happened this week that I just haven't had time to do like video on. So we're gonna kind of wrap three or four different things all up into one quick little news video. Normally, I would just save this for the Sunday, you know, weekend review, but um, I feel like there's more than normal of things that I want to touch on. So we'll keep that one just mostly charts and graphs and, and just kind of knock some stuff out here. I originally had a uh, PSA submission video that I was going to run this morning, Saturday morning, uh, but I will hold that off and run it for on Tuesday, most likely. So. Uh, I am, as you're watching this, most likely, depending on when you're watching it, future people, uh, I am on my way to the Xenia Ohio show, most likely. I am planning on getting up Saturday morning and heading down to that. Uh, and then Sunday, I will be at the Canton Rated Rip show at the Holiday Inn. That should be a good one as well. Um, my local show to is tomorrow in Hartville, Ohio, but uh, I'm going to go check out the Xenia show. The weather's supposed to be perfect tomorrow. I'm going to make the trip down. So is what it is. We'll see how she looks. Um, all right, let's hit on a couple different things. Let's start with National Treasures. <sighs> um, man, I guess let's start here. Let's start with Panini in general. Uh, what are you guys doing? Uh, bad week for them, really. Um, we had the, you know, the Jeff Wilson. I got a lot of comments on this or question messages on this about Jeff's video that he did on uh, Panini ruining select. And then, you know, Panini also maybe ruined National Treasures <laughs> in a weird sort of way. So we'll get to the select situation in a minute. Let's start with NT. So there's two really crazy things going on with National Treasures. Uh, one is it's like $4,000 per box. Two, uh, <laughs> the patches aren't even anything worn. It literally says on the back, like, not associated with any player events or basically anything it's like associated with the dicks shelf uh at you know your local sporting goods store or like the team shop from the you know from the team's arena it might be associated with that maybe we don't really know so your highest end product of the year is this and flawless basically and you can't even get event worn jerseys in there i mean i know covid's going on and stuff but like Come on, guys. Seriously? And then on top of that, there is this weird LaMelo Ball autograph thing going on. Um, so up on the screen here, good old card porn has uh, the LaMelo Ball one of one next to Miles Bridges. And listen, I am no... Uh, handwriting expert that's going to take the stand in a court case. But I did sleep at a Holiday Inn last night and god damn do those look the same. I mean <laughs> Mello says he changed his signature because that's also not what it looks like on his earlier product. It's his full name and full uh, first name and last name. Uh, I get the MB like it makes sense but it literally looks the same as Miles Bridges. Like, exactly the same. So he was either very intentionally trying to do that, or, I don't know, something else went, happened. Make your own conclusions. But this seems a little sketch-tastic. Uh, so you have this going on. You have the whole, uh, we got a jersey from NBA.com uh, and Fanatics for these cards going on and this is four grand a box i mm, boy am i glad i don't rip wax i would not feel great about breaking this stuff and i wouldn't really want anything from it i mean yeah it's lamello's true rpa i guess but i don't know this just seems Bad even for Panini standards. So I don't know what's going to go on with this autograph situation. I really don't. I really don't. Probably nothing. 
because there's really no way to prove it, I guess. I don't know. I, I'll be curious. I'll be really curious what happens with this, but I am glad that I don't really care about any rookies from this class. Maybe Isaac Okoro a little bit because I'm a Cavs fan, but I don't really think there's anyone that spectacular in this class to worth going Gaga over their cards for. Maybe someone emerges that could obviously happen. I think there's some really good NBA players in this class. I don't feel like there's anyone that's superstar level. I would actually probably have Anthony Edwards stuff over LaMelo Ball, and I really don't want either, to be honest. And Edwards is a very entertaining player. I don't know that he's a championship level player. Long way to go in his career, but uh, I'm probably higher on him than LaMelo, uh, to be quite honest. I don't know, though. It's, it's tricky. I'm not, I'm, I'm, in general, I'm not big on either one of them, but. Yeah, so the autograph situation, the jersey situation is going on with NT. On top of that, I would strongly encourage everyone. I mean, not that I need to encourage people to watch uh, Sports Card Investors Channel. This video has 34,000 views uh, and will probably keep going. This one will probably be pretty popular. Uh, but Jeff uh, and Tyler, a.k.a. Teapot, lay out... Um, you know, exactly all the different parallel levels and how select has kind of transformed over the years. And, you know, we talked about this before on this channel when they announced retail select. Um, they really just ruined that product. I agree a lot with what uh, they said in this video to really boil it down. I do still have some faith in older select uh, that people are smart enough now to know that you know, prior to this year, Select is still a, was a pretty good product. Um, I think field level and court sides will still be cards people want. I don't think this affects the value of Luca's court side, you know, silver or base, um, you know, or Zion's court side or anything like that. Maybe it takes the shine off just a slight bit, but I don't think it's going to cause it to go crashing to the ground. And I don't have a ton of select. I have like a Luca select premier level and some other odds and ends of stuff. I actually probably have more Baker Mayfield select than anything else. Uh, sealed wax. I don't know about that's Jeff's position in this. And, and I'm not a sealed wax guy. So maybe it does affect the sealed wax side of things a little bit more. Um, who knows? But going forward, I really don't want much to do with that product on the football or basketball side, like from 2021 going forward. I would probably stick strictly to field level and court sides only because they, they're they like a legacy card. And we would kind of need to see how the pop counts flush out on that. Like, I still think field level silver and court side silvers will be desirable. Uh, they might not be as desirable as they once were. But if I was going to buy a player's card and select, I would probably shoot for that. Uh, I would not get caught up in chasing all these random numbered parallels. I would just go for the true blue select silver court side or field level uh don't get caught up in the pinwheel zebra polka dot giraffe striped die cut uh cards i would stick with just straight field level court side maybe even base and silver of those just the true blues don't don't get cute with it um and maybe that's even a stretch i don't know we'll just have to see how things shake out Maybe the pop counts still stay low on those because there's so many other different things. There's like 150 parallels now on select. There's, I forget what they said, like 21 of ones or 31 of ones or something ridiculous like that. Like, what are we doing? So, I, I mean, but he said, you guys want product. Pretty machine goes burr. We're going to run it into the ground. Um, I really wish they would have just created a new product and left select alone. You could have just made another retail release. Uh, Really, now, the all to me, which I've always been big on this, we'll see what they do with Optic. Uh, I've always been a big Optic guy. I love Optic color. Uh, I think Optic rated, has the rated rookie logo. And I think that carries some weight with some people. So we'll see if maybe, maybe this is Optic's time to shine now. I always thought Optic was criminally undervalued on the older stuff. I've said that probably the entire time I've had this channel. Uh, I've been a massive fan of Optic. They haven't screwed that up yet. It's always had a retail release, and the pop counts are typically fairly low on that stuff, especially like Optic Hollows. Um, and a lot of the Optic color are tough grades. There's a lot of surface issues on Optic, and there's centering issues on Optic because the way they design the cards. 
So maybe it's optics time in the sun. I don't know. I really don't know. We'll see if I don't remember football being crazy, like with a billion different parallels, but I didn't buy or rip any 21 football. So we'll see what happens. Um, the last thing I want to touch on after the Panini nonsense, let's flip back over to good old card porn here. Um, this alt stuff. So full transparency, I have never used alt. Um, I have a general grasp of what it is. Uh, essentially it was a vaulting service and I'm probably explaining this poorly. Um, like a PWCC slash star stock slash data tool. Cause it was given like eBay comps on stuff as well. Uh, to be honest, I was actually strongly looking at signing up for all post the national because I had heard a lot of people talking about it at the national. They had a booth. I checked it out just real quick. And there was a lot of social media buzz about all that. I was strongly considering making an account. I never got around to it. And I, just got caught up with post-national nonsense. And then this stuff came out. So essentially, they had a extension that you installed in your browser that allowed you to see best offer prices and a bunch of other nonsense while you were cruising eBay to not have to go open up, you know, like a 130 pointer or market movers or card ladder or whatever. Well, what they didn't tell anybody was is it was probably looking at a lot of other stuff that it wasn't supposed to be doing. Um Card porn caught it or someone at card porn caught it. They're not one person. They're a group uh, posted about it. And very quickly after alt hot fixed the thing, apologized and said, no harm, no foul. Well, not so fast. My friend, they probably violated a bunch of EU anti-privacy laws. Uh, they're probably going to get sued. I am not a lawyer, but this probably isn't going to end well for them in the grand scheme of things. And I feel better about my decision never to have installed it to begin with and or sign up with them. Uh, maybe they shake it off. This hobby has a short memory. Um, they will probably try to brush this under the rug and move on. And in six months from now, most people will forget that this ever even happened, unfortunately. But I will be looking at them with a side eye going forward. And though I was considering using them, um, I will not be now. So I am glad I never made that account and never installed this thing uh, onto my computer. So that's the alt thing. If you have it uh, and you haven't heard about this, you're probably living under a rock. It's been all, all over social media. So I would check that out. But uh, yeah, a little sketchy practices there, alt. Uh, I don't know you guys, never used you guys, but not a great look. Uh, and I probably won't be using you going forward. I am generally very particular about the companies that I use slash represent. That's why you don't see a lot of sponsored videos and stuff on the channel. Um, I only use or I will only advertise slash work with companies that I actually genuinely use. So, you know, my slabs, I enjoy my slabs as a product. I will absolutely be happy to help promote my slabs because I enjoy that platform. Um, you know, I have a star stock referral code down there. I use Starstock all the time. Uh, I'm not thrilled with them doing repack products. Is what it is, kind of a nature of the beast. But uh, I still use Starstock quite frequently. Obviously, Market Movers. I've been a massive fan of Market Movers for since it close to since it released. Um, but yeah, uh, you won't be seeing an alt affiliate link anytime soon. Uh, that's for sure. Um, we'll see what they do. Maybe eventually I'll circle back around and check it out. But I would be surprised if I do. Um, once one of these companies usually do something like that, it takes a lot to earn back my trust. So, uh, if you're using all, you know, dig into this, see what you think, see what you want to do your call, obviously. And like I said, I've never used the software or the company myself, so I, I don't want to get too into details, um, on, you know, the intricacies of how it works, but not a great look. And they are probably going to get in some trouble for this one so uh trying to think if i'm forgetting anything i think those were the real big things the just panini nonsense in general with this lamello ball stuff and then just the whole i mean they've done this before with the you know this jersey is 
not event worn or not associated with any player. They started that nonsense last year and blamed it on COVID, which part of me got, but like you've had a year to figure this out now. This is NT. Like you would think you would go above and beyond for NT to make it happen. Um, I don't know what the timeline is for when you need jerseys by and all that crap to get stuff in product, but I feel like if you wanted to make it happen, you could have made it happen. It's kind of a slap in the face to chart, which I know Panini doesn't charge 4K for the box, but. The distributor set the price and then, you know, in the shops or whatever. But regardless, it's 4K a box. And that just feels not great. So, yeah, I think that's all I got for you guys. Uh, Panini doing not great things. Alt doing even worse things. Uh, and I relatively agree with most of Jeff's takes on the select situation. And once again, I highly encourage. I uh, can't imagine that you have it. But if you have not seen this video, uh, go check it out. Even if I know a lot of people don't like Jeff. Um, I personally do. I met the guy a couple times now genuinely seems like a good person uh, i usually have a pretty good read on people uh but even if you don't like his content i would recommend watching this uh, i think they have some very good takes and really break things down on the current state of select and where it's gone over the last couple of years so that's all i got for you guys and girls uh, like i said as you were watching this i am on the most likely on the way to the xenia ohio show unless something crazy happens overnight uh, so if you are there, keep your eyes peeled for me. I'll probably be sneaking around somewhere, probably with a mask on. Uh, but yeah, like, comment, subscribe, and we will catch you Sunday for the Week in Review, which will probably mostly just be market trends. Uh, like I said, I just kind of wanted to do a news dump. because There was kind of a lot of stuff going on, and I didn't want it to clog up tomorrow's video. Uh, Monday will be Marvel Monday. Not sure what the topic is yet. I have a product to review. I just don't know if I will be getting the video done in time for Monday. So either this weekend or, or either this Monday or next Monday, there'll be a potentially comic book related product review coming out. Uh, and then Tuesday, I will do a PSA submission review. I got cards back from Card Collector 2 grading. Uh, that's already recorded and ready to go. Like I said, it was going to come out today, but held it for uh, to get this video out instead. So uh, yeah, smash likes, sub if you haven't. Catch you guys and girls in the next one. Peace.